Today in the world, one of the primary reasons that Am Yisrael is going in a different direction than what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants us to go to is because of money. We have become addicted to money to the extent where we're obsessed with it, that's all we can think about. We make our decisions based on it, where we're going to live, what we're going to build, where we're gonna, who we're going to work with, who we're going to be friends with. Some people go to specific synagogues just because they want to sit next to some millionaire. Some people want to be friends with certain types of people just because they figure they have a certain amount of money, maybe I'll get some. People make all types of ir irrational decisions because of their obsession with money. Now, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says to us, Liya kesef Liya zaav ne'um Hashem tzevaot. Mine is the money, mine is the gold. I'm the one that decides if you're going to get any of it. What, you think if you're going to marry him, therefore you're going to have money? You think if you're going to marry her, therefore you're going to get money? You think if you're going to live in this neighborhood, therefore you're going to have money? You think if you're going to have this job, therefore you're going to have money? I decide. Now why is this a problem when we decide? Because if we decide, we start going away from Hashem. To such an extent, we start violating the Torah outright, but calling it kosher. Now, anyone that watches my shulim on a regular basis knows that I've spoken against the horrible epidemic we have in the business world today, specifically the Jewish business world, an industry called merchant cash advance. This Rabotai Karim is the epidemic of the generation that will bring the next Holocaust. No exaggeration. Now you may disagree with me at first because you may be in it or you may be benefiting from it or you may know somebody that's in it. You don't think it's so bad. Wait till you hear. In the 1100s, the Jewish people were doing really well in England. Primary business, lending money. They lent money to the Goim. The English mayors said this is necessary for the economy. Jewish people were prospering, started increasing interest rates, little by little took a certain amount of control over the economy. One day, the mayor decided to take a vacation. As you would have it, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, perfect opportunity. For what? A revolt. The Goim started killing Jews in the streets. Reason? You guys destroyed our economy with your high interest rates. Fast forward, Spanish Inquisition, same thing happened. Fast forward, Holocaust, less than 100 years ago, less than 80 years ago. Number one thing that Hitler said that gave him a pretext of why it's a right thing to do to hate Jewish people is because of their usury, their high interest. It's so high, it got to the point where it destroyed the German economy. Why? If you charge somebody an average interest rate, let's say 5, 10%, they're able, if with normal growth of the business, they're able to make payments. But if you charge somebody 35, 45, 50% interest rates, that means that that business has to double every year just to meet the demand of the interest payments. How many businesses do you know double every year? It almost never happens. It almost never happens. And if they do, they do it only for a temporary amount of time. The merchant cash advance business charges as much as 400%. And if that's not bad enough, they make people sign certain documents that give them outright permission to take over all of their assets in 24 hours, even if they're late by a payment. Not default, late called confession of judgment. Now some people that are not familiar with this business but they know somebody that works in it may think, okay, you know, how is this going to bring a holocaust? I mean, this rabbi is a little fanatic. Mordechai Yudi was also fanatic, by the way. We have something in common. It's a good thing to have in common. Why? He was right. I am hoping I'm not right. You look at what's happening in the economy in America, Many small businesses are failing. Big businesses are succeeding, small businesses are failing. Declaring bankruptcy left and right. Almost to the extent of what happened in 2007, 2008 collapse. Why are they failing? The economy is doing fantastic. 
Why are you failing? Why is this guy sh shutting down the shop and starting a new company the next day? He's declaring bankruptcy because he cannot meet the interest payments. He can't meet the interest payments. He shuts down the business, starts something new. All over the country and other places around the world, there are businesses being shut because of this business. This is exactly what happened before the Holocaust. This gives power to Amalek. Now, don't just so you don't think this is my source or this is my idea. This is also in the Torah. If you look at the Midrash Me'am Loez, Parashat Itro, when he gives you the commentary on each one of the Ten Commandments, he says when there is usury, when there is dishonest business, when there is stealing, on the commandment of do not steal, he says if the Jewish people steal in large quantity, HaKadosh Baruch Hu brings famine to the world. Starvation, all of a sudden, a great depression, market goes to nothing. Now if that's not enough, he also says, Lotinaf, don't be immoral, these gay parades and all of these things that people are doing as if it's allowed, and there are certain rabbis, or people that call themselves rabbis that are supporting it, like this one clown from last week that calls himself an orthodox rabbi but made a wedding between two guys. Two guys got married last week under the Orthodox, Orthodox, Ka'ilu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, when there is open immorality, when you're making the sin as if it's allowed, HaKadosh Baruch Hu brings a plague. Now for anyone that's not sleeping under a rock, right now we have a plague in the world. It's called coronavirus. Now, coronavirus wasn't just discovered a couple of months ago. A team of scientists from Wuhan discovered the virus almost a year before the virus was on the news. They publicized the paper. They made it publicly available. They actually even said it's going to come from China. They said it's coming from bats. It's got, now, everything that we know today was already published in a research paper a year and a half ago. HaKadosh Baruch Hu made the smart people blind, ignored it. Fast forward, we have an epidemic in the world with no cure. No cure. According to logic, end of the world could be in 10 months from now. According to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, this is nothing. Why? He decides. So why does he bring an epidemic? Why does he bring a potential famine? Why does he bring all of these things? Because he loves us, even if we don't love him. Sometimes we forget that he's Abba. So Abba, my son, my daughter, I'm Abba. I'm the one running the show, not you. Oh, you don't understand? Okay, I'll show you. I'll show you. Rabotai Karim, certain types of people are in these rotten businesses that cheat goyim under the understanding that they're allowed to do it. So I'll read you a few alachot so you understand that this is not an opinion. If you look at David Melech, David Melech says that there are certain types of people that are going to see Mashiach. In Teilim 15, Verse number five, he says, anyone that lends people money with interest is not going to see Mashiach. Yeah, but he keeps Shabbat, good for him. What about Mashiach? David Melech says no. David Melech is related to the Mashiach, by the way. If David Melech says you're not going to see him, I promise you you're not going to see him. The prophet Isaiah, Chapter 33, verse 15, says the same thing. It says, people that make extortionate profit, Hashem is disgusted by it. The Gemara says, what does it mean by extortionate profit? Gemara Masechet Makot, page 24a, says, charging people interest. 
extortionate interest, not market interest. If you're a regular bank, you charge 5, 6, 7%, that's the normal market rate, no problem. But you start charging people 40, 50, 60, 70% types of interest where you're killing people's businesses just because they're desperate? The prophet Isaiah says, the words of God says, HaKadosh Baruch is disgusted by such behavior. Prophet Micha, chapter 6, verse number 8. Says such things, charging people with interest, is not even something you need to know from the Torah itself. This is simply logic. Even if we didn't have the Torah, we would all know it's wrong to do it. And that's why Shlomo HaMelech made an halacha in his time 3,000 years ago, at the time of the Beit HaMikdash. And he says it in Proverbs 28, verse 8, that anyone that charges interest is simply going to make a bunch of money that Hashem is going to take away from him and give it to somebody that cares about people. Midah keneged midah. You hurt people, he's going to give it to somebody who cares about people. And that's why Shlomo HaMelech, Chachami Kol Adam, wisest man of all time, says, you're forbid who's he talking about? Is he talking about what, lending a Jew to another Jew? No, you don't need Shlomo HaMelech for that. Shlomo HaMelech says you're not even allowed to charge a non-Jew interest, even if he's an idol worshiper. Meaning, even if he's a Rasha, he's not good, not a good guy. Hashem hates him. Still not allowed to charge him interest. So how come people are doing it? Because there's a little confused point. Where the Chachamim say, you are allowed to charge interest if you are a Talmid Chacham and you're learning Torah all day and you need to make a living but you can't work a regular job so you have a little bit of money you could lend it to somebody to make some money out of it but just enough for you to live not to become rich that's allowed but how many of these bankers do you see are actually Talmidei uh, Chachamim how many of them are making just enough to live almost zero now, the Yakut, Yakut Yosef, Kitsur Shulchan Aruch, in Yore Dea, Siman 159, Ilchot Ribit, Seif 8, says the Torah permits us to lend a, to a Goy, but only to make a living was the Heter made. Meaning, the leniency that Shlomo Amelech, Shlomo Amelech says not allowed, but it's a rabbinical mitzvah. But where is there a leniency on what Shlomo HaMelech, the grandfather of Mashiach, what is the leniency on what he says? You're allowed to lend to a Goy if you meet these qualifications, which is just to make enough to live. You need two, three, four, five thousand dollars a month to survive, that's it. No big conglomerate businesses start going public, selling stocks to the pub, none of that stuff. Just enough to survive. Which means that most Jews wouldn't even be in that business if it's just, if I'm only allowed to just survive over this business, I can find something else I can make a living on. And not to become wealthy, he says. Unless it's a Talmud Chacham who's even permitted to become wealthy from it. Meaning, if it's, let's say, a huge Talmud Chacham, someone that's a major scholar, and that's, he's only lending money. Here, he has one customer. This guy comes to him every few months. Listen, I need to borrow 50,000, 100,000. He wants to give money. If he ends up becoming wealthy, that's bracha. Why? Akadosh Baruch is deciding it. But that's not because he's going to chase people looking for customers. Already we see there's a lot more clarity on an entire industry that unfortunately today in the religious world is very popular. So popular that I'm hearing that there are certain Bachurim from Yeshivot leaving the Yeshiva and joining this business. Now, the Rabbi Yosef Shaul Natanson in Sefer Divrei Shaul, Ilchot Edut, Perek 2, Alcha number 5. He actually says, this is a couple of hundred years ago, he says you shouldn't even lend money to a goy in order to and charge interest. Because if a person wants to do tshuva for lending money, 
that he charged interest on to someone that let's say for example he lent money to a Jew and he charged him interest and you want to do tshuva for it in order to do tshuva for it you have to stop lending money even to non-Jews. Why? To completely destroy the desire you have for lending money. Why? Because it's easy money. Hashem doesn't like easy money. Why? It's in Parashat Bereshit that you are going to make a living with the sweat of your brow. Meaning you're supposed to toil. It's not supposed to come easy. Nothing good comes easy. So there are many, many other places, many other Chachamim, the Ramah talks about it. The, uh, the Gra, the Vilna Gaon talks about it. Some even called Gezel. The sages talk very harshly against Jewish people making money with interest, whether to Jews or to non Jews. Now, why do I tell you all of this? Most likely, maybe none of you guys are in the business, and if you are, Bezot Hashem, you'll leave it. I tell you because I love you. I tell you because no one else is going to tell you. And the reason I know no one's gonna tell you is because this business has been growing for years, quietly. And not a single rabbi has spoken against it. Why? Look, they're using the money for tzedakah. Look, they're using the money to build another yeshiva. Yeah, we're building another yeshiva, but intermarriage is over 80% in America. What kind of yeshivas are we getting today? If the yeshivas are being built, great, it's good, we need yeshivas. I want to build a yeshiva also in Florida because over there we need a lot of help. Hashem Yishmur see what kind of yeshivot we have. A woman called me just a week ago. She told me I, uh, I have a problem. I said, what's the problem? She said, what you said in the shield two months ago came true. I said, I said a lot of things. Tell me, it'll be a little bit more direct. She says, you said that there are missionaries, Christian missionaries teaching inside yeshivot. I said, yeah, and she goes, that's happening. I said, to elaborate, please, I want to say this in a shiu. She says, my seven or eight-year-old boy came home and said, Ima, I learned a chidush today for my history teacher. She goes, what'd you learn? I said, I learned about Yoshke. Hashem Yishmo V'yatzil. She says, I borrow money every month just to make sure my kid goes to yeshiva. He comes back to me with a different religion. This Rabotai Karim is not a new story and it's not an individual story. When our primary concern is building buildings and money, we start making all types of leniencies. Like for example, hiring history teachers and gymnastic teachers and English teachers that are not even Jewish. Why? Maybe they're a little cheaper. So now you are letting Haman and his friends inside sometimes the yeshivot. And almost every yeshiva that I'm familiar with has one of this, has this situation. And they don't think it's a problem. I had a group of kids from here calling me for six months straight, telling me, asking me all types of questions, but questions that big people ask. Not questions that 13, 14 year olds ask. Big questions, questions that philosophers ask, questions that people that are very, very learned ask, adults ask. Heretzy questions. Oh, Hashem, we had the answers for six months straight. After six months, I asked them, don't you guys go to yeshiva though? Where do you get these questions from? He says, there's not our questions. So whose questions are these for six months straight? Oh, it's our teacher's questions. I said, what kind of rabbi do you have? He's asking each question. He goes, no, it's not the rabbi. It's the, it's the science teacher. He said, he's a Jew? He goes, no, he's an atheist. I said, you have an atheist? Teaching in the yeshiva? He goes, yeah, but he's not teaching us religion. I said, he's the best religious teacher in the world. Look, he's teaching you atheism. He's teaching you atheism inside the yeshiva. I called the Rosh Yeshiva. I saw him, Lumit Bayesh. You're not embarrassed of yourself. You have 14, 15 kids that are calling me left and right, and I'm trying to save these kids because from becoming atheists because of you. He goes, what did I do? I said, you hired an atheist. He goes, oh, he told me he's not going to do it. Well, I said, apparently he's doing it. He still gave him two weeks before he fired him. This is happening. Why? We're obsessed with money. Our obsession with money doesn't just start and end at being dishonest in business. 
Our obsession with money has many, many different tentacles that lead us astray, lead us away from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And this is one of the things that HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't like. He doesn't like it at all. He doesn't like it to such an extent that he gives very big warning shots, like we see in the world today. Rabotai Karim, some of this stuff may have nothing to do with you. But it may do. Your brother, your sister, your friend. Either way, a person needs to know that if he wants to have bracha in their, in their parnasa, first and foremost, understand where it's coming from. If you understand where your money is coming from, you'll act accordingly. If you know that God is the one that's giving you the money, then there's no reason for you to cheat. There's no reason for you to try to maneuver something that's perhaps illegal or safek allowed, safek not allowed. There's no reason for you to cheat the system. There's no reason for you to try to beat the system. Whatever Hashem wants you to have, you're going to have anyway. This is one of the things that a person needs to know. And the reason why is because if you simply ignore everything I just said, which is everybody's choice, everybody can choose to do that. If we ignore it, then the problem is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu says that if when we don't pay attention to his signs, you treat me with casualness, meaning as if what I'm saying is not so important, as if my you know, permission to do something or prohibition to do something is, doesn't really matter. He says, you treat me with casualness, I'll treat you with double casualness. Meaning, the signs, the warning signs, the difficulties become much worse.